Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. A new era for Boston City Council, the groundbreaking leader of the panel, and key issues facing the hub. New year, new session for the Boston City Council, but some old issues that residents would like attention paid to. And more trouble for the T, the backlash after talk of a significant fare hike. From WCPB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us this morning. We begin with the new Boston City Council President, Michelle Wu. She's the first Asian American and third woman to hold the seat. She was first elected to the panel two years ago. At the age of 28, she is a former restaurant owner, legal service attorney. She is a Harvard College and Law graduate. She lives in Roslyn. Dale with her husband and their son Blaze. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Great Happy to have you. Year. And by the way, let me just say for the record, right off the top, woo and woo, but there is <laughs> no relation, right? You're not related to each but other. But I would right? love to be related to that little boy that we're looking <laughs> at. Isn't right he adorable? He is right. just absolutely yeah. adorable. Congratulations. You've broken Thank a lot you. of glass ceilings here, but perhaps one of the most interesting one is the fact that, and it isn't said very out loud very often, is that how young you are. You're 30 years old. So I guess my first question is, how did you manage to do all this by this age? <laughs> um, you know, life is funny, and, and about 10 years ago when I was growing up, um, I would have had no sense that I would be in politics in any shape or form. I, I'm the daughter of immigrants, and we didn't discuss government or politics at the dinner table, but a series of um, family situations developed. My mom became, started struggling with mental illness and from there I found myself at the age of 22 raising my younger sisters, running a family business and became very intimately acquainted with government and how stressful uh, it often is to deal mm -hmm. with bureaucracy, especially at the, lo the local level. Is that what encouraged you to go to law school and to get into politics? Yes, yes. And so what have you done politically before running for the city council and becoming president? My main and only experience really in politics was working on the U.S. Senate campaign of my former law professor, Elizabeth Warren. It Big was supporter of yours. a whirlwind and um, I am I'm just so thrilled every time I see her on TV representing Massachusetts. She's the same person she was at Harvard Law School and a big inspiration for me. Life can mature you rather quickly, can it? Even at yeah. an early age, right? All right, let's talk about, let's talk about some issues that, that face the, the people of the city of Boston and the people of Massachusetts who work and, and do commerce in the city. The MBTA, front and center in the minds of most of your constituents, I would imagine. It's a, it's a daily issue. Voters outside of Boston as well. Do you think a 10% rate hike is warranted? You know, the, the T is struggling with some major funding issues. It, as someone who represents the entire city of Boston, many neighborhoods and, and residents who struggle to get to work, who struggle to find housing that's accessi T accessible, public transportation accessible, it's going to be very, very hard for people to manage that. Our elders, our youth, um, it, uh, you know, we need to do something to, f to figure out right. a, a sustainable funding system, but right. um, to ask ridership to bear it all uh, is, 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 I think, um, harmful for so the So you say no, it's not warranted? You know, I, we're, the T has been underfunded for a very long period of time. Um, we need to get creative. There, we do have to talk about fair hikes, but for for the the for the hikes to go in across the board, I think we'll we'll see a lot of people finding it very difficult should, to, should to get around. Should services be eliminated also, or or perhaps uh, instead of the fair hike? What do you think? You know, services have been eliminated already, right? Mm -hmm. We're already talking about late night tea mm -hmm. um, going by the wayside, which I thought was a, a a major oversight in terms of the economic growth that would happen if we had had predictable and long term late night service. Uh, I do think we need to make adjustments. We're look we we are. Are serving the MBTA serves not just Boston but the entire right. region, the entire um, you know going all the way. And it out feeds to the, the economic engine of, of New England, of, you know the, the Northeast Coast, really the city of Boston. Absolutely, it's fundamental to our housing situation, our job situation. Right. Um, so it's a problem that needs to be solved. So would you support a five percent increase over a ten percent? I mean, some fair increase, perhaps not as high as ten percent. You know, it's. From our level, I'm not familiar with all the details of the finances of the, of the T and, and what 
you know, what hikes would, would result in, um, what uh, investments that could be made. I think we need to talk about a sustainable long-term funding system for the T. So are you talking revenue about taxes? Sources. Are you talking about the state stepping in? Is that what you're talking about? I, yes, I think we need to talk about more investment uh, and not having the ridership bear the entire funding needs of the, of the MBTA. Um, you support peak pricing for parking meters in Boston, another transportation yes. issue. How much should it increase and for what neighborhoods do you think that would be appropriate? I think it's all, it should be data driven and I believe that that's what the administration is looking at. Uh, Mayor Walsh has been really focused on looking at the numbers, looking at um, uh, crunching the data to, to make these decisions. Obviously our downtown neighborhoods are very congested. Uh, Newbury Street should not be the same pricing as um, uh, shopping districts in other parts of the city. So when we have that data, you, I think most people would, would have a good sense of where the, the parking should be more expensive, and that's the, the places that you end up driving around and around. So doubling or tripling the parking, uh, price, the parking meters like on Newbury Street or Boylston would not be inappropriate? Is that what you're saying? I don't know about tripling, uh, but I think that the price of parking should reflect um, the, the demand, and it should, should end up having an impact on congestion. In, in, in San Francisco, some of them have gone up to $7 an hour in some certain spaces. You know, a space that might be 2 bucks an hour is, is all of a sudden 7 bucks an hour. I, I wanted to ask you, though, wouldn't you be afraid that it might drive folks from the back to the suburbs away from business in Boston if, if the pricing goes that high? Well, it sort of goes back to the earlier question around transportation, right? We want, we as a city want people to have multiple transportation options to get to where they want to go. We want to support our businesses, certainly, and not affect the uh, customers that are coming in. But when you tweak parking pricing, when you tweak, uh, when you change the incentives, hopefully people will find a way to better use cycling and, and walking and, and public transportation. All right, you ready for the OTR pop quiz? No, but no, no, no. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> now, here you go. Your resume includes opening a tea shop after you moved back to Chicago to take care of your mother and your sisters. You were talking about that earlier in the show. As you may know, Boston has a long history with tea, so tea <laughs> is the theme of the OTR Pop Quiz. Question one. In 1773, more than, one, <laughs> more than 100 Sons of Liberty famously dumped 92,000 pounds of tea belonging to the British East India Tea Company into the harbor. Which country was the source of the tea leaves? And it's a multiple choice. Okay. Was it China? Was it India? Was it Turkey? Was it Indonesia? East India. I would guess India. It was. Uh, that was my guess, to be <laughs> honest with you. China is the answer. In fact, China remains the world's largest producer of tea in the world. Question two, and this is a bonus tea party question. Can you name the type of tea that was dumped into the harbor? Oh, I walk by the museum so often. Um, was it... No, I can't. It was, it was it English breakfast? Was it Darjeeling? Was it Darjeeling? No, keep going. It's black tea. <laughs> black is what oh, okay. We'd get there. We continue with Michelle Wu on the record. Stay with us. Too obvious. Yeah. <laughs>